Welcome to my YouTube channel where I simplify the web. In this video, I'll be showing you 11 different ways in which you can select elements from the DOM that you want to style. In CSS, when you want to apply styles to elements, you first have to target the element. You have to select the element. You can do this by using the element tag name. You can do this by using classes, IDs, or many other ways, which I will be showing you in this video. I'll also be leaving timestamps in the description of this video so that you can jump to the specific selector that you are interested in and also in the video description I'll be leaving links to different videos where I simplify each of these selectors in detail but yeah let's jump to the code editor as I show you how these 11 different selector types works with examples let's start from the first selector type which is the universal selector and this is used for selecting all elements in the DOM for styling I'll be using this simple HTML project here to explain how the universal selector works so you can see I have this link tag where I link to this CSS style sheet then I I have this div tag which has two children a h1 and a p tag and i have this section tag which has two children an image tag and a h2 tag this is the result here now if i come here and i use this universal selector which is the asterisk and then i do something like a background color of light blue and i do a border of one pixels solid red if i come back here and i refresh you can see that all elements in the dom now have this styling here you can see this heading has it this paragraph has it this image tag has it this second heading has it even this div and this section as you can see here this div and this section here they also have that style the second selector type is tag names which is used for selecting elements that match a tag so i'm going to come here and i'm going to clean this and then i'm going to use the div tag like this then i can apply some styles to all div tags in the dom so here i can say a border of one pixels solid red if i come here and refresh you can see that this is the only div tag that it matches if i come here and i change this to h2 and i come here and refresh you can see this is the only tag that it matches if i have a second h2 that says maybe second h2 if i come back here and i refresh you can see that these two h2s match this h2 tag name selector type and so both of them is going to have this border of red that we have specified in the style the third selector type is classes and this is used for selecting elements that have a specified class name so let's say this h2 has a class of second heading here i'm going to target this class by using the period first then i enter the class that i want to target which is second heading and then here i can say font size 60 pixels if i come here and i refresh you can see that even though this is a h2 tag and this is a h2 tag because i am using a class to select the element since this is the only element that has that class this is where the styles will be applied if i come to this p tag and i also add a class of second heading even though this is a p tag if i come here and refresh you can see that the p tag also has that style because this element and this element match this selector type that we have declared here which is the second heading class the fourth selector type is ids which is used for selecting elements that have a specified id so i'm going to come here and i'm going to clean this from here i'm also going to clear this style sheet let's say this h2 instead of having a class has an id of second heading here i can target this element that has this id by using the hash symbol then after the hash symbol i specify second heading and then here i can specify whatever styles i want to specify so i can say color red and background color yellow just an example if i come here and refresh you can see that this is the heading that matches this id selector type and that is why the styles are applied to it if this p tag here had a different id let's say an id of um, paragraph here instead of of targeting all p tags i can target only the p tag with the paragraph id and then here i can say border one pixel solid purple let's say i have another p tag here and i'm going to clear this one off if i come here and i refresh you can see that though there are two p tags but this is the only p tag that has the specified id that we have in our css the fifth selector type is attributes and this is used for selecting elements that have a specified attribute so i'm just going to clear this css and remove all this ids that i have declared for the attribute selector type you use square brackets and here in this square bracket you enter the attributes to select elements that have that attribute so here if i specify an src and i come here and i specify a style like border one pixels 
solid red since this image tag has this src attribute this image tag is going to be styled so if i come here and i refresh you can see that this image has one pixels solid red but if i also come here and i add an src to this h2 even though the h2 by default doesn't support src's if i come here and i refresh you can see that the h2 is also styled because here we are not just specifying image elements we are specifying any element that has the src attributes so because this h2 has this src attributes it's also going to be styled now when using attribute selector types you can specify just the attributes like this and it's going to match every element that has this attribute or you can specify an attribute with a value using the equal sign so here i can match elements that have the src attributes with let's say a value of d like this so if i come back here and i refresh you can see that even though the image tag and this h2 have src attributes but because they do not have this d value they are not going to be styled so if i come to this h2 here and i enter the d value like this if i come here and i refresh you can see that the h2 is now styled the sixth selector type is studio classes which is used for selecting elements that are in a specific state at a time i'm going to clear this again and i'm going to clear all of these additions that i have made to use the studio classes selector type you specify a colon and then you specify the state that you want to select now there are different supported states in css so i can use the hover state and this is going to apply some styles when i hover on an element so here i can specify a background color of red and also here at the top i need to add a doc type just to specify that this is html5 now if i come back here and i refresh you can see that just by hovering on the body it already has this specified style that we have here which is a background color of red let's say i apply an extra one like font size of 60 pixels if i come here and refresh you can see the body is red and literally everything in the body is now 50 pixels if i hover on the heading you can see that this is also applying to all elements that are in the hover if i hover on the second body you can see how all of this plays with the elements the seventh selector type is pseudo elements which is used for selecting specific parts of an element for styling so i'm going to come here and i'm going to clear off for using the pseudo elements yes a selector you enter two colons and then there are different supported pseudo elements i'm just going to use my favorite which is selection and then here i can say background color of yellow and color of white so what this pseudo element does is that when i highlight a text for example the highlighted part is going to have that style so if i come here and i highlight this you can see it has a background color of yellow and a color of white if i highlight this part here if i highlight this part here if i highlight this part here it is literally going to match those specific parts of all the elements in the dom also if you are curious to know the difference between studio classes and studio elements you can check out the previous video i've made explaining this i'd leave a link to that in the description of this video for the remaining four selector types that i'll be showing you these are called combinators and i'll be showing you different combinators you can use for selecting elements the first combinator is the descendant combinator which is used for selecting an element that is a descendant of another element just going to come here and i'm going to claim this css now let's say i have a p tag here and this p tag says just another p tag don't mind the spelling you can see we have p tag here we have p tag here what if we want to style a p tag that is a descendant of a section tag now if i come here and i just say p tag and i say font size of 40 pixels if i come here and i refresh you can see that this p tag here is affected even this one is also affected but what if i only want to target this p tag that is a child of this section then right here i can specify section then an empty space that empty space signifies that the next element should be a descendant then i have the p tag now this is going to select p tags that are actually descendants of section tag if i come here and i refresh you can see that only this p tag is affected and note that this p tag doesn't have to be like a direct descendant let's say here i have another div tag and then i have this p tag inside the div tag as long as this p tag is a child or a grandchild of this section element the style is still going to be applied i'm refreshing and i can see it is still applied and of course you can have multiple descendants so here i can have section i can have div and then i can have p so that means div should be a descendant of section p 
P should be a descendant of that div. So in this P here, that is a descendant of this div, if I have another section here, and in this section I have this P tag, if I come here and I refresh, you can see that only this P tag is affected because this P tag is a descendant of this div, which is a descendant of this section, while this other P tag is a descendant of a section, which is a descendant of another section, and that is not what we specified here. The second combinator type, which is the ninth way of selecting elements, is called a child combinator. And this is used for selecting an element that is a direct child of another element. I'm going, just going to come here and I'm going to change this to section P. And for the descendant combinator, I told you that the P tag can be a descendant, can be a child, it can be a grandchild, can be a great grandchild. That style is going to apply. But if you only want to match the P tag that is a direct child of this section, then you are going to use the greater than symbol like this. So I'm just going to come here, come here and take off this section. If I come here and refresh, you can see that this one has the style that we specified. This other one doesn't have the style. Why is that so? because this first one is a direct child of this section tag while this second one is not a direct child because it is a child of this div tag which is the direct child of this section tag and the next combinator which is the number 10 way of selecting elements in css is the sibling combinator and this is used for selecting an element that is a sibling of another element just going to clear off this CSS here. Now, what do I mean by siblings? In this section element, this image, this h2, h2, p, div, they are all siblings. Also here in this div, this h1, p, and p are all siblings. So here we can say h1, and then we're going to target the p tag that is a sibling. How do we do that? We use this tilde symbol, and then here we apply style. So this is going to apply style on the p tag that is a sibling of this h1 tag so here i can say color let's say brown i haven't used brown if i come here and i refresh you can see that all the p tags that we have aren't brown only these two p tags are brown because they are siblings of this h1 element note that this p tag has to be after the h1 so if i bring this h1 down here and i come here and i refresh you can see that even though these are also siblings they are not affected because in the css we have specified that the p should be after the h1 and also the p doesn't have to be immediately after the h1 so let's say here i have an anchor tag just specify something here if i come here and i refresh you can see that the p tags are still affected because they are siblings after the h1 element even though they are not immediately after they are still siblings and then the tilde symbol which is the sibling combinator is going to select those elements and for the last combinator which is the last selector type i'll be showing you in this video it is called the adjacent combinator which is used for selecting an element that is a direct sibling of another element now the Adjacent combinator is actually similar to the sibling combinator. Like I showed you with the sibling combinator, this is going to select the P tag that is a sibling of this H1 tag, which is these two P tags here. But if I use the adjacent combinator, which is the plus symbol, this is going to select the P tag that is a direct sibling immediately after the H1 tag. If I come here and I refresh, you can see that this P tag is not brown because even though it is a sibling, it is not a direct sibling. It is not an adjacent sibling. But if I take this P tag up here now and it is a direct sibling of this H1, if I come here and I refresh, you can see that it is now brown so the sibling combinator matches siblings that can be immediately after or not immediately after as long as they are after that's fine but with the adjacent combinator it has to be a direct sibling which is directly after the element that was specified which means p is a direct sibling of h1 these are the 11 different ways in which you can select elements in CSS that you want to style. Also note that you can combine some of these selectors together. For example, you can combine the universal selector with the child combinator selector. You can combine a class selector with an ID selector. You can combine a pseudo class selector with an attribute selector. There are different ways in which you can combine these selectors to target specific elements. And I'll be making a video where I show how some of these selector combinations work. If you love to see that video then subscribe and turn on post notifications so that you know when i publish that video and if you enjoyed this video also give it a like and share this video with other developers that might find it helpful